A U.S. Senate panel investigating Russian interference in last year's election has issued a formal demand for documents from President Donald Trump's former national security adviser. Michael Flynn has failed to voluntarily cooperate with the investigation, the Senate Intelligence Committee says. He was forced to resign in February after failing to disclose the content of his talks with Russian diplomats. Meanwhile, the fallout continues over the firing of the FBI director. The White House maintained that James Comey was removed on Tuesday for his handling of the inquiry over Hillary Clinton's emails. But U.S. media reported that he had recently asked the Justice Department for more resources for his Trump-Russia investigation. The Senate Intelligence Committee said it issued a subpoena after Mr. Flynn rejected its request on the 28th of April to submit documents relevant to the investigation. Mr. Flynn, a retired Army Lieutenant General, misled the White House about discussing U.S. sanctions against Russia with the country's envoy, Sergei Kislyak before Donald Trump's inauguration in January. His links to Russia are being scrutinized by the FBI and the House and Senate Intelligence Committees, as part of wider investigations into claims Moscow sought to tip the election in favor of Mr. Trump, and into contacts between Russia and members of the president's campaign team. The rare use of a subpoena by senators makes it clear that the committee is forging ahead with its investigation into the alleged Trump-Russia links. The BBC's Laura Bicker in Washington says. Reaction to Mr. Cummings' firing continued on Wednesday, with the White House spokeswoman saying that President Trump had been considering sacking the FBI director since he was elected. But critics accuse the Republican president of firing the nation's top law enforcement official because he was leading the Russian inquiry. The White House has rejected calls to appoint a special prosecutor to investigate allegations the Trump campaign colluded with the Kremlin over last year's election. The Senate Intelligence Committee invited Mr. Cummey to testify next week. In a farewell letter to staff, Mr. Cummey said he would not spend time on the decision or the way it was executed. I have been long believed that a president can fire an FBI director for any reason, or for no reason at all, he wrote. It is very hard to leave a group of people who are committed only to doing the right thing, he added. My hope is that you will continue to live our values and the mission of protecting the American people and upholding the Constitution. President Trump stood by his actions, saying Mr. Cummey was fired because he was not doing a good job. On Wednesday, Democratic Senators Dianne Feinstein and Richard Durbin told U.S. media that Mr. Cummey had asked the Deputy Attorney General for more resources, mainly staff, for the FBI investigation. Justice Department spokeswoman Sarah Isca Flores called those reports totally false. Either way, Republicans and Democrats vowed the House and Senate Intelligence Committee's investigations into the Russia claims would continue. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said if Mr. Trump believed replacing Mr. Cummey would halt the inquiries he made a big mistake. Days before he was fired as FBI Director, James B. Cummey asked the Justice Department for more prosecutors and other personnel to accelerate the Bureau's investigation into Russia's interference in the presidential election. It was the first clear-cut evidence that Mr. Cummey believed the Bureau needed more resources to handle a sprawling and highly politicized counterintelligence investigation. His appeal, described on Wednesday by four congressional officials, was made to Rod J. Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, whose memo was used to justify Mr. Cummey's abrupt dismissal on Tuesday. It is not yet known what became of Mr. Cummey's request, or what role, if any, it played in his firing. But the future of the FBI's investigation is now more uncertain than at any point since it began in late July and any fallout from the dismissal is unlikely to be contained at the Bureau. Two separate congressional inquiries into Russian meddling are relying on evidence and intelligence being amassed by the FBI, and if the Bureau's investigation falters, the congressional inquiries are likely to be hobbled. Perhaps for this reason, Mr. Cummings' firing appears to have imbued the Senate Intelligence Committee with a renewed sense of urgency. Continue reading the main story.
the committee issued its first subpoena in the Russia investigation on Wednesday, ordering Michael T. Flynn, President Trump's former national security adviser, to hand over records of any emails, phone calls, meetings and financial dealings with Russians. It was an aggressive new tack in what had been a slowly unfolding inquiry. A day earlier, the Senate panel began pressing a little-known government bureau that tracks money laundering and terrorism financing for leads in the Russian investigation. Senator Richard M. Burr of North Carolina, the Republican chairman of the Intelligence Committee, and Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, the Democratic vice chairman, also invited Mr. Cummey to testify in a closed session a setting that would allow Mr. Cummey to discuss classified information and any meetings he held with superiors at the Justice Department or with Mr. Trump. Mr. Cummey has not yet said whether he will attend. The Senate's rush to press forward with its investigation set up a potential showdown with the Trump administration over the future of the FBI investigation. While it appears unlikely that the Justice Department or the White House would move to shutter the investigation outright, the President and other administration officials have called for it to end, sowing concerns at the FBI and among some in Congress that it could be starved of needed resources. Still, the White House insists that Mr. Cummings' dismissal had nothing to do with the Russia investigations, and Sarah Iska Flores, the Justice Department spokeswoman, said that the idea that he asked for more funding for the Russia inquiry was totally false. She did not elaborate. But Democrats were unconvinced, and Mr. Cummings' firing was quickly taken up as Exhibit A in the case for the Justice Department to appoint a special prosecutor to take over the case. I'm told that as soon as Rosenstein arrived, there was a request for additional resources for the investigation, and that a few days afterward, he was sacked, said Senator Richard J. Durbin, Democrat of Illinois. I think the Cummy operation was breathing down the neck of the Trump campaign and their operatives, and this was an effort to slow down the investigation. According to the congressional officials, the Senate Intelligence Committee learned of Mr. Cummy's request on Monday when Senators Burr and Warner asked the FBI director to meet with them. They wanted him to accelerate the Bureau's investigation so they could press forward with theirs. Congressional investigators do not have the authority to collect intelligence that agencies like the FBI and the CIA possess. Mr. Rosenstein is the most senior law enforcement official supervising the Russia investigation. Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself because of his close ties to the Trump campaign and his undisclosed meetings with Russia's ambassador to the United States. At the meeting with the senators, Mr. Cummy said he had made the request because he believed the Justice Department had not dedicated enough resources to the investigation, a fact partly stemming from the unusual situation under which the inquiry was being run. Until two weeks ago, when Mr. Rosenstein took over as Deputy Attorney General, the investigation was being overseen by Dana Boanti, who was acting as the deputy and had limited power. As recently as last week, Mr. Cummy said he hoped he would find a supportive boss in Mr. Rosenstein. In congressional testimony last week, Mr. Cummy called Mr. Rosenstein a very independent-minded, career-oriented person and said he had briefed Mr. Rosenstein on the Russia investigation on his first day in office. To a president who puts a premium on loyalty, Mr. Cummy represented a fiercely independent official who wielded enormous power. But if the White House was hoping Mr. Cummings' firing would provide relief from the pressure of the Russia investigations, the Senate Intelligence Committee appeared eager to fill any temporary void. Late last month, it asked a number of high-profile Trump campaign associates to hand over emails and other records of dealings with Russians, and the committee's subpoena of Mr. Flynn on Wednesday made good on its threat to legally compel anyone who failed to voluntarily comply with its request. Russia's efforts to meddle in the presidential election are also likely to be a focus of the Senate Intelligence Committee's annual hearing on worldwide threats on Thursday, which is ordinarily a wider-ranging and policy-focused event. Also on Wednesday, Mr. Burr and Mr. Warner asked the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network for financial information on Mr. Trump and some of his associates that was relevant to the Russia investigation. 
both Mr. Warner and Senator Ron Widen of Oregon, the ranking Democrat on the Finance Committee with jurisdiction over the Treasury Department and also a member of the Intelligence Committee, have said they will block the confirmation of Seigel Mandelker, Mr. Trump's nominee to be the top Treasury official for terrorism and financial crimes, until the network delivers the information. I have stated repeatedly that we have to follow the money if we are going to get to the bottom of how Russia has attacked our democracy, Mr. Widen said on Wednesday. That means thoroughly review any information that relates to financial connections between Russia and President Trump and his associates, whether direct or laundered through hidden or illicit transactions. The little-known bureau, which operates out of a toilet bowl-shaped building in the suburbs of Washington, serves as the financial intelligence network of the United States, gathering and maintaining a vast collection of data on transactions and suspicious financial activity that can yield valuable leads and help expose hard-to-find networks. The Financial Crimes Network would not confirm its participation in the inquiry, in line with its policy not to comment on investigations or even confirm that they exist, said Steve Hudak, a spokesman. But financial intelligence experts, including several former employees of the Bureau, said its database, which contains more than 200 million records, can be a treasure trove of information about financial ties between individuals and companies for law enforcement agencies pursuing complex investigations.